Okay, in this lesson, we'll just go through the, some of our checkpoints and uh, also some questions. For the first one, if you want to find the amplitude from a, for a wave for displacement distance graph, you just only need to look at the peak, okay, from the center, from zero to the peak, okay, or, or from the center to the trough. Okay, in this case, the answer is 20 centimeter. If you want to need to find the wavelength, okay, very simple. Again, for displacement distance, this would be the wavelength. Okay, for easy identification, a peak to peak. Okay, or if you want a trough to trough, it doesn't matter. So let's just take a trough to trough. So you find that this is 0 0.8. But do take note, okay, of course, sometimes this one is not in centimeter, but in meters. So it's 0 0.8. Um, the next one, the displacement of point S. Okay, the displacement of point S is not, uh, is not from here to here. Okay, no. Okay, you find that the displacement is simply just always compared to the line zero line. Okay, and it is the displacement is over here. So in this case, it has the position is actually displaced at negative ten centimeter. Second one checkpoint. Some quite similar. Okay, I think that for amplitude is quite uh, easy. So you just only need to do a comparison and you should get uh, 25 okay, estimate centimeter. Period, same thing. You find that for period, this is a displacement time graph. So the period is simply just uh, from one peak to one peak. But uh, for part this particular question, you find that it, you ha may have some difficulty in terms of determining what is the exact period. Okay, maybe it's 0 0.27, 0 0.28, but actually it's not a very accurate way of determining. Okay, what you can do is that you can determine that uh, you can actually count the number of peaks over here. So you have one, two, okay, oh, two also is also quite difficult, but you find that actually over here, this is a half of wave. So you find that there are two and a half waves. So in this case, two and a half waves take 0 0.7. So what you need to do is to just uh, 0 0.7 divided by two and a half wave. And you should get the answer 0 0.28 seconds. Okay, so this is how you get it. And once you get the period, then frequency is actually quite easy to get because you just simply substitute frequency equals to one over period and you should get 3.57 okay, hertz. So this is amplitude. Okay, right now, some bonus questions. Mm, the wave is moving along a long string towards the right. Okay, and this is the wave direction. And P, point P is a point of the wave of the string. Okay, so it is at a peak. Um, the question is really asked is that what is the movement of P at the next instantial? Okay, so will it move right, left, up, down? Okay, think about that. Okay, the solution. It may be tempting to think that P, since the wave moved towards the right, uh, P will move together with the wave direction. Okay, but remember that wave actually transfer energy, but does not transfer the matter. So we find that P actually does not move towards the right. Since and since it's a transverse wave, the movement is perpendicular to the direction of the wave. So you find that the direction of the wave is this way, the movement would be perpendicular to it. So it is either up or down. And then how do we determine whether it's up or down? In this case, it's very simple because P is already at the peak of the wave. So there's only one direction that it can move because it's really moved up to the maximum. So there's only one direction that can go in this case, which is down. But of course, the next question is that what if the particle is not at the peak or the trough? Okay, because if it's at trough, the only direction it can move is up. So the question is that um, same question, the wave is moving towards the right. And in this case, it's Q and R is uh, points on the string. And so what is the movement of this Q and R at the next instantial? Okay, so this is a very typical question. And how do we actually determine how can we find out the answer to it? The answer is actually C. So uh, I will teach you a method of how to predict the next movement of the wave. The general rule is to of predicting the particle motion next is that you will always follow the direction of the particle that was before it. Okay, so before it. What do you mean by that? Okay, as a wave form of energy, for a human wave, if the wave is moving towards the right, okay, the wave is moving towards the right. 
how do we know that the person uh, say in the middle know when to stand up okay the answer is that he will always look to the action of the immediate neighbor to his death so let's just take the one that is at the center so we find that what will happen is that in order for him to stand up he would have to wait for the one that was before on his left to stand up first before he would stand up make sense so only when his left neighbor stand up then he will know that his turn to stand up next but vice versa if the wave is moving towards the left okay if the wave is moving towards the left he would follow his neighbor that to his right okay make sense okay so similarly if the wave direction is moving towards the right the particle will actually follow the action of its immediate uh, left neighbor so if the left neighbor is below the particle it will follow its left neighbor and go down but if the left neighbor is above it it will actually follow and go up so what it means is that okay if we have this particular wave okay let's just set it okay to move okay okay so let's see this particular particle okay this one okay let's make a mark over here and this particular particle so you find that for this particular particle the next the uh, left most immediate neighbor is above it so i will predict that it will move up and this one the left neighbor is actually below it it will actually move down so what will happen is that the, in the next instance okay you find that it will actually move up and this one moves down okay what do i mean by that okay as we predicted okay this one actually move up and this one actually was the original position and then it moved down so this is actually how and it will continue to move up until it reaches peak and this one will continue to move down until it becomes the trough so looking back okay why is it that if uh, this wave direction is uh, towards the right you find that q would be going down because the immediate neighbor is over here which is down so you move down to replace this neighbor okay and then r will move up okay it's because the neighbor is over here okay so this is the answer down and up however if the wave direction is towards the right okay is to oh, sorry is towards the left you find that the neighbor that we consider for q is over here and what will happen is that the q would actually move up and the for r the immediate neighbor if uh, is over here so it will follow and move down so this will be the answer okay so this is how you determine the how will the particle in a wave move up or down given a uh, if you know the direction of the wave okay that's the end of this lesson please subscribe and support my channel for my other physics video lesson arranged according to topics, please visit my blog at boringphysicsteachers.wordpress.com. You can subscribe to my channel to be informed when I upload new physics video lessons. Thank you.